box that pops up on your screen, click the word got it. That'll clear it out of the way. And we're ready to go. Have your seat sit towards the front edge of that seat. Hands on your thighs. Jong Jung, central upright. Often it requires a little bit of effort to create or align your Jong Jung. So if you're slouching and your head is kind of here, this is the generic version of what's happening to us as we're aging, right? We have to lift from the chest. We also have to tip our pelvis a little bit forward and bring the chin down. So at these three levels, we have to make the, the chain. And so let's just do bad posture for a moment. Your pelvis goes back when, like, when you're feeling tired, exhausted, your battery's a little low. It's this kind of deflated balloon kind of position. Uh, chin is slightly up. And then correct it. So it's pelvic wheeling, chest up, chin slightly down. You get this feeling like your crown is being pulled up towards the sky. Do that one more time. So lose all those positions. Pelvis spills back, chest collapses, chin kind of lifts so that we're keeping our eyes on the horizon. And then correct all of that. Wheel the pelvis a little forward, chest floats up a little bit, chin comes down a little so our eyes are still right on the horizon. Once you've got that jong jung, start in on your breathing, in through the nose. Hold the breath full, out through the nose or the mouth in a sort of soft, releasing gesture. All the way to empty. Inhale again towards full. Holding full. And then long, smooth exhale, empty. This allows us to practice the second event after Jong Jung, or central upright, Chun Wun, or relaxing and softening and sinking, allowing that quality of sink to be our mode of finding stability. That's Chun Wu. So a lot of times we're holding ourselves up above the ground and holding on to our body. So with every breath, can you get this feeling of settling, settling? Another saying in Tai Chi, top empty, bottom full. Because again, we're holding on up here as we soften all of this there's this settling, this filling up of the lower, uh, the bottom. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Eventually, there's a stage where the bottom also empties. And so all that's left is this very nimble, agile body that's also grounded and stable. But first, we have to get to this feeling of empty the top, let the bottom foot fill. And the bottom is like, let the belly fill, let the legs fill, let there be this settling, grounding quality. Last couple of breath cycles here. The more you release that grip, that clench in the body, the more you feel interior space. Layers of tissue, skin, muscle, fascia, all the way to the bone. There should be space in between all these layers for the juice of life to flow through us. One of the terms is interstitial fluid. That's a, something they're discovering uh, recently, that there's this sort of juice that is flowing through us when we're alive and healthy. And then over time, these areas get constricted and stuck. And so a lot of what Taoist practice is, is promoting that juice and getting it to flush and pump and move all throughout. So let's move into our 
joint mobilization. Slide hands back, elbows back, shoulder blades back, chest up, chin up, arch in a very satisfying way. Hold that. You can turn the head, wiggle, wiggle, loosen up where you're tight. And then go the other way. Slide your hands forward. Hollow the chest. Drop the head. Round the back. Same idea here. You can kind of wiggle, turn, and just work those kinks out. And then again, sliding hands back. Lift the chest. Opening. Throat space open. Face up. Big breath in here. And then with the exhale, other way. Rounding, hollowing. Let's do this three more times. Just at your own rhythm. Moving the movable parts. Shaking loose the glue, the barnacles, the stiff spots, the rigidity, the numbness, the lack of awareness. We want awareness through every square inch, every layer of this beam. And let's settle to the middle and go right into rotation. Slide left hand forward, right hand back, turn. And turn. And again, same idea, just take your time. We're not in a rush, and you don't have to keep up with me. You can linger in positions for longer if it feels good to do so. And just like any relationship in your life, whether it's with a, another human or a pet, uh, an animal or a relationship to, let's say, something you want to get interested in, want to learn. It takes time. It takes uh, interest and curiosity. It takes a sort of state of mind to bring to that relationship. And so have that with your body. Have that with your sensations. Be very much in this state of listening. Following, investigating. And then we come back to middle. That's the rotational plane. Drop the arms loose alongside you. Lean. As you lean to your right, lift your left wrist, left foot, and just kind of dangle, dangle, and then chain all the way across, dangle, loose, and then switch again, all the way across. We're trying to break a habit, this habit of grabbing our body, clinging to our body, constricting our body as our form of controlling it. So at first, when you're letting that go, it starts to feel unstable. So it's a little bit scary. It's a little scary to kind of dangle yourself over the edge here. So you want to, of course, be safe. But what's very empowering is when you feel yourself, oh, I can relax at this edge. I don't have to tighten up and keep myself safe. I can soften more to one more each side. And when you soften more, you actually find you're more grounded. You're more stable when you stop grabbing anything. You release all that grip. You find more stability, especially over time. And then we come back to the middle. Let's go right into our shoulder work. So it's shoulders forward, up. Back, down the back, under, forward, and up, and over the top and back. And just keep doing that. Keep doing that. 
at your own rhythm. Find your barnacles, your stuck areas, your tense spots, the little glue. So that eventually all you feel when the body is sort of we've broken up a lot of that congestion, it's like lubrication. There's just lubricated sliding parts. And it's on that slide, kind of like if you stepped on some ice and slipped out from under you like that, that quality, let's go ahead and reverse. That quality is a quality that can be cultivated inside the body and it's one we can control. So that starts to feel like you're just going, you're just sliding the parts. And as you practice with that as your North Star idea, the sliding and gliding, You'll run into these areas where the tissue is sort of stuck, and then you just polish it out. You don't force it. You just round by round, just like how water can wash away stone. You just wash away those stiff spots, round by round. Bend the elbows, elbows out, all the way up. Now here, we're just going to hold them up here and try to get some more real estate. See what I'm doing here? I'm kind of leaning, I'm tilting, I'm opening. It's this natural thing we do, you know, when we're tired or we're feeling like we need to yawn and we oh, open, right? Get this space inside here, armpits and chest. And then... Melt down, bring them around in front and squeeze, press the elbows together, hold the air, hold the air. And out, up. And then elbows straight back, hold there, get all that neck, shoulder, upper back, shoulder blade, muscle, tone, 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 while you're opening here. And then elbows down, elbows forward, up, and just hold this position. Same idea, a little leaning, a little turning. Just loosening up all the relationships in the body that can get stuck, but they're free. And then switch again, elbows down and back, holding head and neck movement, shoulders, and switch. Tilting. Elbows down. Elbows out to the side. Open. And then cross and hug and hold the hug. Keep holding that hug. Open. And cross. Open. Uh, Malcolm, you're unmuted. I'm just going to mute you. Okay. Thanks. Good to see you. All right. Now elbows come down. 
Arms out in front of you at a little 90 degrees. Turn the palms down, up, down, up, down. And then hands out. Notice how the elbows stay in pretty close to the body here. So this is opening this area, external rotation. Then bring your hands in. Now your elbows have to go out and around in front. So you can see here, they went from elbows being right alongside me to around in front. So it creates this hollowing and this internal rotation here. And then elbows in, hands out, external rotation. And then hands in, elbows out and around, internal rotation with that hollowing of the front, opening of the back. One more. And open and stay open. Step your feet wider apart. We go left hand up all the way over the rainbow and down. So as you get over here, you have to sort of lean and turn the body a bit and your left groin area will open. And then come up, over the top, down. Right arm up, over. Body has to lean and turn in that right groin area to keep that open. And then reverse to here. Up and over, <laughs> and reverse. Up and over, reverse. Again. And we're back. Now both up, across, one wrist is above the other. Turn the palms down, arms fall and separate between your legs. Then cross, bring them up, open, down to the side. Other wrist on top, down, cross, Over, cross, down. The name of this one, there's a standing version of this that's more, more involved, but it's Jung Fu Jai Die, the Chinese words for open, unfold, close, fold. Open, unfold, close, fold. Last one. And bring legs in, arms in, wrists over top, under and out, palms up, roll. And once you get that initial wrist circle, so you make sure it's moving from the wrist, then add to it this little soft clasp, the monkey paw. So as you come over, clasp the hand, that helps open up all the little carpal spaces here. And then out. Fingers gather and the wrist fold over top. So Malcolm, watch my hand here. See how I'm bending over top, pointing towards. Then goes out, rotate, comes over top, pointing towards you. There you go. Good job. Now we reverse that, come under point towards yourself over top. Turn the hands under, over. And then add the fingers. Gather, circle. So that idea I was talking about before, juice. It's useful to just think of the basic idea of life juice. And we're helping to promote this juice to go into all these spaces because the problem is the body loses that irrigation loses that flow. So all these movements promote that. Hands face forward, spread, gather, spread, 
gather. Now we add to that, as you spread, come underneath. And then as you come back over top, gather. So it's like a fanning, fan open and come under and then over. Fan open and come under, fan closes, come over top, two more. Just find that round movement. And spread fingers, claw into a fist, and then release. Now we're adding to this, this what's called sigh or plucking. So lean forward in your chair. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. So lean forward and reach somewhat up and out. And then clasp at the full reach. Turn the arms upside down. And then pull, drawing in. It's called plucking, drawing down and in. Then relax the hands. As you lean forward, float the arms out in internal rotation. Finish the extension, clasp, as you clasp, turn everything, arms upside down, and then pull. Relax, lift and float, lean forward in your chair, reach. At the very end of that reach, clasp, turn, and draw down towards belly level. Float, empty, loose, breathe. Class, pluck. Now we do that to the corner. So step to a slightly wider stance. We'll go to your right corner first. So turn the body just a little bit that way. Float those arms, lean to that right corner, reach, extend. As you clasp, turn the arms like you're sort of grabbing a rope. So you got one hand here, one hand here, pluck. Relax, lean and reach, 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 reach. Get to the end of that reach, clasp, and then draw. And then relax and float, 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 float. This is called storing, preparing to then issue the gesture, the energy, the energy of plucking. And there's all the different energies that we'll go through. But this is plucking, sigh, pluck. Now we're going to go to this other corner. So come back to middle, relax, and then lean a little, reach, soft, clasp, get the hands kind of like you're holding the rope, and pull. The whole body is involved. That's what we're looking for here is this liquid body, the whole body, rather than, let's say, just my arm doing something and everything else is frozen. Everything flows through these movements. The power of one drop of water is nothing compared to the power of a wave from the ocean, right? And so that's what we're doing is we're getting all of our little droplets together and, and letting them work together with softness as the unifying idea. All right? And back to middle. Relax. Scoot back a little bit in your chair so you're stable. Let's load. So you bring that right knee up, right heel close to the buttock. Push. Reload. Set the foot down. Other leg. Load. Push. Load. Switch. Load. Push. We're looking for... Freedom of movement, so this loose, soft quality that just allows all the joints and tissues to just slide and glide with each other with no resistance. So that's the Tai Chi idea of how to create a useful and powerful body is to remove that which is extra, that which is resisting flow. So that's why softness can eventually become incredibly powerful. Incredibly powerful. And down. Now, right leg extend, point, flex, the foot. And then tilt the foot a little in, a little out, a little in, a little out. 
and then circle around. Reverse around. Other foot. Point and flex. Tilt the foot in, out. Circle. Reverse circle. And yeah. Scoop front uh, forward to the front edge of your chair. Step your feet a little wider apart than hip distance, but not super duper wide. Lift the toes off the ground. Turn on the heels. Turn your legs internally so you're closing your quad. Knees could even touch. Toes get close to each other. And then lift those toes and open. So now this quad, this groin area, opens. And then close. Open. So we want three legs at the hips. We want these moving spiraling easily. So first we got to clean out whatever's clenched and gripped. And then we're back to neutral. From that same free moving uh, relationship, fold. So we're hip hinging and then sit upright and lean back. So the whole body relaxed, and then we just say, okay, I can just fold. This will open up the sacrum and lower back, which is a really important area to not allow to become totally locked up, right? And then this quad, this groin area that we can just fold and unfold with ease. That's what you wanna upkeep regularly. Make sure there's lubricated, happy relationships between the pelvis and upper body and the legs and lower. And then let's find neutral, sitting upright, hang the arms. Loose uh, arms. So this place I'm pointing to right here, again, a lot of people think of their arm. If I say your shoulder or your arm, they think they start here where the arm bone meets the socket. But it's more about the space inside of here so that the shoulder blade can move. So as you swing the arm, what's really important is that when you swing back, that the shoulder blade does this interesting little sort of winging up movement. And then here, the shoulder blade moves and changes. Shoulder blade moves and changes. Shoulder blade moves and changes. So swing that arm and feel this space that I'm touching here. You can maybe even touch it yourself. Feel that there's, when I say the word space, literally think of it like a little empty area of space around which your arm can move with ease. So that bringing the arm up, bringing the arm down isn't about muscle tension and effort. It's about emptiness and floating and levitation, lightness, looseness. Switch sides. Floating it loose, right? Letting it swing a little behind. There's more room in front but there's some room behind. So don't try to force it beyond where it should go behind you, but also don't stop it frozen here. Let it find that space behind. Now with that looseness, let's double up. Both arms loose. Empty, remember what I was saying at the beginning of class, top empty. Bottom full. Usually we have a full top with all this effort and strength, right, from weight lifting or just being stressed out and holding on. You want to empty that. Let go of that. Feel that lightness, that freedom of movement. And then go one arm forward, one arm back. Switch. Switch. Now let this movement slightly rotate you from your middle pivot. Let there be this rotation, not a huge rotation, but just a little turn, 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 turn. And 
with this feeling of empty top. Keep it relaxed. Now notice your feet are not the only thing keeping you up. In fact, not 80%, 90% is just your butt through the chair. So now tap your feet, fast feet. So feel this empty feet. Now pause. Notice as you fold from the hips, keep the arms as loose as we just worked on. Shoulders, arms, and head in front of your ankles. Pour the weight out of the chair, down through the feet, so now they're no longer empty feet. They're full. And then push through those full feet and just let that straighten you all the way up. When you come all the way up, resist the urge to put your arms on and put your body on. Instead, let go. That same looseness we just had. Just let them hang there. They won't fall off. Now, fold at the hips. So let's just do just this movement a couple of times. Just that movement. Notice there's no bending of the knees because too often when I'm working with people and I say, all right, sit down, the first thing people do is they push their knees this way. And then they do something funny and then they wonder why the knees hurt over time. So hip hinge. So this is the most important part to sitting down is just this little move right there. Come back to vertical. And then this is the other thing is a lot of people who stand stand up straight, they stop somewhere around here, and then they're walking around and wondering why the back hurts and why the neck hurts and all of that. So it's this, this loose body where you finish bringing those hips in and underneath you that gets you jong jong or central upright all the way through. So now, hip hinge, so we allow this little shape, and then it's the butt sitting that bends the knees, you search with your butt cheeks for the chair, and then you, ah, and we're back to the chair. Now your feet are empty again, fast feet. So empty, let your feet be light and empty and relaxed, and then don't tighten them up here, just let your body weight pour down through out of your feet into the earth, and just stand up and stay very light. Get all the way to this position, and then let's sit down again. Just hip hinge. Remember, don't bend the knees first. That's the first gesture. And then just like an origami or an accordion, you just fold the parts, and then you land. Standing up, pouring like water pouring out of a pitcher, down to the earth. Now, don't sit in your chair, but do this exact same folding up movement and go down and touch the ankles or shins or possibly the toes or even the floor. Let this open your back. And then push through the earth and rise all the way up. And again, watch me do it once. Watch how much I'm sitting to get low. That pulls this open. That opens up some of these stuck places, and then we rise to standing. Do that again. So it's not just dropping the body over top this way. It is sitting your tushy, sitting the buttocks. And then we rise all the way to standing. Now, Tip a little bit into your toes. And just hang there for a moment. Just notice the topography of the feet. There's more out in front of the ankle. So we can lean a little bit that way and let your loose arms go that way. So don't hold your arms back here. Loose. Let them hang. And then rock back to the middle of the feet. And then a little bit into the heels. Be safe, of course. Don't push it too far. But just get a little bit more in the heels. And then into the toes. And middle of the feet, heels. And remember this term I talked about at the beginning, chun one, which means releasing and sinking and softening as your means of finding stability. So it's a challenge on this one because it's a little scary, especially in the heels as you rock back a little. 
but release down through the heels like that's what's going to plug you into the earth. Rather than tightening up, relax. And then relax. Now we're just going to go right into our Tai Chi work today, our, our 13 energy work that we've been uh, sort of semi-advanced uh, Tai Chi. So as you rock forward, you swing the hands a little forward. Rock back. Swing them back. Forward. Swing forward. Back. So we're getting this fluid. The idea that we are the ocean. That the chi within us expresses everything we see in the ocean. So now the first thing we express is called pum or rising. So as you rock forward, pum. Rising, 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 rising. Then from here, rock back and slide the hands back and settle them just a little bit down. Rock forward again, G. This is like the, the water of the wave going up the shore, up the shore, up the shore, up the shore, up the shore. Turn your palms to face each other. Keep them far away, down, under, behind. Come up. Like you're going to tickle your own armpit. Come tickle your own armpit. And then forward with the wrists relaxed. Forward, 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 forward. The hands change to here. And then this is called Ru. Down and back. And then again, Pung. Rise. Again, slide back. Settling the hands. And this is called On. Look where my hands are right next to the body. Down, 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 down. And then that squat that we did. Sink. Letting everything go out of your body. And when you come back up, there is nothing held on to that is unnecessary. That's the idea. Round by round, we're polishing that out. Let's do it again. So we rock a little forward, swing forward. Rock a little back, swing back. Then we pump. Rock forward and pum. Rock back, slide back, and settle. Then from here, it's G, or the wave going up the shore. So rock forward, G, all the way out. Palms face each other, go long, all the way under. Up that back path under the armpit, like you're going to tickle your armpit, go out with wrists relaxed. All this is storing up, ready to then issue, loo, the down sweeping back. And then again, pong. This is all considered storing, storing, slide the hands back and settle, storing to then issue on the sinking, sinking. And then this is loose, release, everything empty. Come back up, loose and relax. We do it again. Rock, soft swing. Rock. Pung, that's considered issuing the pump. This, as you rock back slide, we're storing up, storing up. And then we issue G forward. Turn the palms. This is releasing the exercise and storing up. Come up that back path under the armpit. Out, preparing, storing to then issue Lu. And then this is a pung, but it's considered storing as we pung and slide back and prepare for on or sinking. And then soon, soft, supple, pliable, release. And back to standing. Let's do it again. So we're like uh, your battery's out in your car and you need to jump start your engine. We're jump starting our chi engine. Rock. Rock. And then pump. Slide back and settle. G, forward, under, up the back, under the armpit, 
out over top. Move. Hung. Slide back and settle and on. Sinking, 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 sinking. Sung, soft, supple, released, and relaxed. You come up to standing, you have a moment of nothing, moment of zero, and then you rock a little forward, rock a little back. Pung to G, so it's pung or rising. Slide back, settle, and store for G, forward. Turn the palms to face. This is releasing and then storing or preparing. Come out through here to then do lu, sweeping down and back. Pung. Slide back and settle and prepare for on. Um, and then clear out all channels. Let all go. Forward, a little back. Pung to G. Rise, slide back and settle. G. Down, under, up the back side, out over top, and loop. Pung to on. Song. And from standing, change your weight to your right leg, turn a little bit right, and have the arms swung over to this side. And then change sides again. Change. So your weight goes into your left leg, you turn, and you let the arms swing across to this side couple of those chains. So it's similar to the bear washing pause, but it's not as precise with the hands. It's just this changing side and getting loaded up, that idea of storing. So we're now like a wind-up toy, wound up, and then we're changing and getting wound up on the other side, loaded, right? Now the next time you're in your right leg, stay there. Now remember, Pung was rising. Right? So we had this rising quality, but what happens if we, as we pung, we change the weight and turn? So then it's pung, it's rising and it's coming up and across, kind of like a wave coming up and over. And then let it finish out to the tips of the fingers and just let them fall down this side. Change the weight, turn and get back to that loaded position. And then pump, so it's rising and you're shifting and turning. So it's coming up and over. And then let it fall. The other description I think is useful is as if I've got a blanket in my hands and I'm throwing this blanket up over something to cover it. It's got to have that feeling of you're getting air underneath here. Up and over. And then softly down. So this is pum. Pum. It's just a different expression of it. Now let's do the other side. So change. So that's that first thing we worked on. Wind up toy. And then pum the other way. So it's rising up and over. And then let it just fall down the side. Wind up toy, so you feel that stored state, and then from there, let the wave wash through, and then let it fall down. And then pump this rise. Let it finish before you let it just fall. Pump. Down. Now, from this position here, swing your arms underneath and come up to this corner. 
And then for Lou, it's a specific little hand position. Turn your right palm, palm up, this hand, palm down. And then dragging across or guiding across at a sort of downward diagonal. Let it finish all the way down here. And then swing under. Story. So you're prepared here. Turn right palm up, left palm is down. And then our weight should be in the right leg. Now we change the weight to the left leg. Turn and guide, 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 slide, 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 slide down. Let it finish. Swing underneath, come up to this corner. Turn the right palm up and loo all the way across. Swing under and loo. Now change, meaning change sides, and then let's do the loo on the other side. Swing it under and up to this corner, turn the left palm up, right palm is down, and guiding downward and diagonal across. Swing it underneath, so the weight should go into your left leg here, and your waist is turned a little left, and then your weight goes into your right leg as you turn your waist a little right. So we're operating from our cockpit in the belly, the middle of the body. We're doing a little shift, turn, swing, and then loo, guiding, sliding. And remember, we are training softness. So if you're really aggro with the movement, you're missing out on an opportunity for this polishing. So we want to have this looseness. That doesn't mean we're not being thorough with the movement. Just means we're not putting extra, not letting extra get in the way. So it's loose, levitating the limbs. Down. Now, change sides. So now we do Pung Lu. So that first exercise of rising, Pung, up and over. Now you're at this corner, turn right palm up, Lu. Guide it down and across. Change sides. Change. Now it's pung, rising to this corner, and then left palm face up, loo. Guide down and back. Change. Pung. Up and over. Right palm facing up, loo. Change, load it up, and issue, hung, storing up, preparing, issue, loo. One more on each side. So this change, leisurely, casual, relax, and then right palm facing up, and then down. So remember, the loo, uh, Janona, after you pung up to here, the loo ends up down here. Chain. Pung. So the pung is going from low to high, and then left palm face up. This is going from high to low. Great job. And chain. So that's Pung and Lu, the first two energies. Change again. Now everyone be in your right leg, stored up. Now, this little setup here, bring your, uh, what's that, your right hand over top and your left hand in front. So I'm being your mirror. So this is my right hand, but I'm saying left for you. So make this little ball. So notice you're not on a ball like this. You're on a ball like this. So your left hand is on the front of a ball, and this is on the top. So the body weight's here. We're turned a little here. We got this little ball. Turn your left foot out just a few degrees. Now that's our new front over there, not towards the camera that way. Now this is called G. Remember, G was going out through the fingertips. So G, exude the ball forward, <clears throat> and then bring it back. And 
there's something, a good example we can all picture. Let's do this a few times. G and back. So like a lumberjack grabbing on a big saw and sawing at a log, there's a part of the lumberjack that has to stay very stable in the middle, even though you're exuding force or issuing force this way and issuing force this way. But we don't just go 100% that way and 100% this way, we lose balance. So get this feeling of as you're exuding that force, you're issuing, there's part of you that's staying right where you are. And then as you're bringing it back, still there's part of you that stays here rather than getting too far back. So this is this middle. G, all the way. Let it finish all the way. And then loop. I mean, uh, uh, bringing it back. It's kind of like a loop. But G, Now, drop the hands. We're going to switch sides. So, feet parallel. Change. Make your ball. Your right foot just a little bit pointing that way. So, your hips are just a little open. And then, G. Issue. After it finishes, there's just a natural return. <laughs> G. Exude it. And. Loaded. Issue. Let the issue finish. Turn. So that's the third energy. Okay? Change sides again. So every time I say change sides, you know to get to this position. Right? Set up that ball. Now, G this way. And then at the end of that G, float the hands up a little, come back with the hands right in front, sink, on, sink. And in this little foot position, we get this extra little space to sink through and release. Let's do it again. Make the ball, G, let it finish. Float up, come back, and down. Make the ball. G to on. G floats up where this is storing, preparing, and then sink all the way through. One more. Make the ball, G, float, let it come back, and on, down, through. Let's switch sides. Make the ball on your left side, right foot points out a little bit, G, float up a little, come back just in front of your face, your chest area, and Find that way through, down through the middle, all the way through. Make the ball, G, floating, bring it over top, and down through that space in front of you. Make the ball, G. back, down through that space. One more. That space. Now, 
load, we go tongue. Turn that right palm up, loop. Change. Make the ball. G. Float up over top on down through that space. Then we load up on this side for palm. Turn left palm up. Loo. We change. Change. Make the ball. G. Float up, bring the hands over, find that space, and go down through that space. And release. Loading up for pum. Right palm face up. Ooh. Change. Make the ball. Over top. Ah. Loading up on your right side to then go palm. Blue, left palm facing up, guiding. Change sides, make the ball. Flow right into. Float up over the top, find that space. Load up on your left side. Let's do one more each way. Pum. Blue. Change sides, make the ball. Change sides, make the ball. So first change sides, then make the ball. G. Up over. On. Load up on your right side, hum. Left palm facing up, loo from high to low. Change sides, make the ball. Down. Now standing in the middle, we'll finish with the fifth energy, Psi, which we already did earlier. Remember, that was the reaching, plucking exercise. So this starts to add a little bit of the footwork of the 13 Energy Tai Chi. So put your weight in your, uh, your right leg and bring your hands up right in front. Remember, this, this, this space of looseness to just bring them up right in front. Now, as your weight is in your <clears throat> right leg, your hands are here. Step your left foot a little bit in front. Shift your weight into that left leg and reach. Clasp. And then your back foot is empty. Put the weight into your back leg and draw and sort of drag your front foot back. And then we're going to change sides by dropping the arms, changing into your left leg, bringing the hands up, stepping your right foot forward as you just kind of leisurely lean and reach up, grab a hold with that soft clasp, and then pull. Drop everything. Just casually change to your right leg. Now your left foot is empty. Hands start floating up as you step. Shift, reach, reach, reach. Get that rubber band extension, soft clasp. This is stored up to then go pluck. Change sides, right foot being empty, step as you float, as you reach, full extension, clasp, and pluck. Change, float, step, reach, and pluck. Change. Step, float, reach. 
and well, body's totally relaxed. There's nothing happening. You've got now your left foot empty. These are loose and light. They float up in front. Step, and now this is that extension. So it's like a rubber band being pulled long. There's now the potential for it to snap back, right? So we're getting that feeling, clasping, and then we're issuing that snap back. Again, not violently, but you just want to feel that, boom, that's the side energy in the body. Then drop everything. So you're just totally empty. Right foot is empty now. Float the hands up as you step a little bit in front. Reach. <clears throat> Clasp. And then side. Drop everything out of the body. Because the tendency once we're here is to kind of carry that tension in the body with us. So part of the, the practice is this drop everything, which sounds easy, and it isn't. We always hold for whatever reason, especially with Parkinson's. I've noticed there's a lot of that holding. So this practice of do the thing and then drop everything. And then from this everything dropped place, then it's the easiest to do the next thing, because there's nothing in the way. Reach, clasp, issue. So we've got this feeling in the body that we've just pulled in. Now drop it completely out. Change to the other leg. Now your right foot should be empty. Let's do two more each side. So as your right foot is empty, you're ready to step forward. All of that flows together. Clasp, and then shoot. Drop everything. Change leg. Now we're ready for step and reach. Get that to flow together. That's like one event. And then this is the other event. Boom. Just because I said it's one event doesn't mean it happens instantaneous, right? It has flow. So same thing here. This is the third event of just dropping everything and changing leg. Now one event. Step and reach. It happens with flow, but it reaches its end point. Clasp, and then plucking happens all together. Empty everything happens together. Last. And open, lift, rock a little bit to your toes, closing in front, rock back to your heels, bring the hands in the upper, settle everything to the middle, and then do that little Tai Chi squat. So this is called Sink Chi Wash Organs, it's basically like combing out any tangles left in the hair, right, with some long hair. So here we're just combing out any last tangles. And we're also reorienting around middle. One more. Clearing. And then we close with wings, roll, fold over top, this gesture of consolidation, and then settle everything down again to use the belly button. Again, according to the, the Tao, the Chinese medicine view, belly button, belly button level of low back, and then the place right between there. This is our belt meridian. This is our middle. This is where we can operate this body from. This is where when we sleep, we store and build our life force. So as we close the practice, just seal three breaths here where you just try to do literally nothing. 
nothing in the mind, no thinking, planning, opinionating, all of that worrying, nothing in the emotional layer of concern and turbulence. And so we let it just be total return to simplicity, which is restorative, rejuvenative, organizes it. And then the final hand gesture, which is this hand mudra, which looks a little bit like a little yin-yang symbol. So when we do that, we're remembering to harmonize the polarities of the world, the ups, the downs, less rights, hots, colds. We're, polar, uh, we're, we're balancing those around the still pivot point. They're harmonized around that stillness. So that's that meaning when we're doing this little hand position, we're remembering, oh yeah, harmonizing everything that's going around, uh, going on around stillness. Thank you, everybody. Well done. Uh, if there are questions, uh, feel free to unmute and ask. If you have to wander off, we're a little bit over time. Uh, so uh, feel free to just wave and say bye-bye. But if you have any questions, please feel free.